I can't smell you right now. Uh, that's me again. This is the car that I jumped on the other day that, as you see, is how, other than here, as you see, is how I see it. Uh, somebody's been here and says crank sensor. Oh, it, it could be. But, um, simple test I did before because I didn't bring nothing else. I forgot everything. Uh, is a, a mechanical test that's got compression. So, I want to make sure there's no you know, timing up here. Uh, that starts getting a little pricey, but uh, time consuming and 70 miles from the house. So, uh, ruled that out really quick and uh, had no fire. I didn't hear any ejector pulse, but what I clued on when you talk to customers, they can tell you one thing. Sometimes you got to reword your questions or come from a different angle to understand what the true cause could be and lead you down the right path. I was told that some fuses got moved so it would crank. See, that right there tells me something. So uh, what they did, they swapped a blown 10 with a 30 amp and it spins over and stuff now. That's not the right way to do it. You put in the same, same uh, amperage fuse to see if it blows it again. Because a 30 amp, it could have blown something downstream. Now the fuse is fine. But we could have burnt something else up. Let's see if we can figure this out. So what we did, all I've done, I forgot to hit record. So I'm back to where I was. All I did is find I got the backup fuse and I stuck it in, it's just 10 amps. So I got the charge pack on, it's on, and uh, go ahead and I just turn the key on. Let's see what we got. That popped it. Popped it. Yep. Yeah. So it immediately popped that 10 amp fuse. So that tells us we got to short the ground, of course, downstream from here. So that's what we got to figure out. Because if you drag, even, even though this 30 amp would have said, I can handle it, it could burn up something downstream or drag the voltage low enough where it won't run something else. Come on, you engineers. Y'all know what I'm talking about. The mechanics are probably just not figuring this out. Uh, all right, do me a favor. Uh, key is off, correct? Yes. All right. I'm going to go to here and run this uh, down on what's running exactly on that fuse that just says ignition. It could be just the ignition. I don't think. So, we gotta, we gotta rule out, because, oh yeah, that's bad. And it could be something else on the same circuit, so you gotta run that down. This is gonna take a few minutes, got a lot to go through, so uh, I'm gonna pause you. I have no backup battery for this camera, so I'm gonna pause you. Kid told me it was an 01. It's an 03. But still having to Google stuff. If you look at the door, it says uh, 1 of 03. 2003. Maybe all the printouts. You told me it's a 2001. It's a 2003. That's why the that's why the diagrams are wrong. So let me see if I can pull something up real quick. I definitely believe him, but I've got to see because he's I'm confused. <laughs> I'm so confused. It says it in the door also. First that's month. That's definitely of my fault then. So mm. never have she <laughs> your car. You should know the years of your cars. Uh, this falls on Justin, not her. I'm sorry, Justin. Take the blank. I'm taking it? You're taking it. Okay. All right. Now we're blame. clear on blame. <laughs> <laughs> I got to find this real quick. My mind is blown right now. Uh, how do I use Google? Uh, Ah, uh, 
Now, this says online, best I can come up with, use 11, the one that's blowing says ignition, but it says electronic ignition control module, charging system, you know, Saturn, no, Saturn guys know what I'm talking about there, and neutral stop backup switch. So, what we're going to do is, we are going to go buy some fuses, and uh, I didn't... I did think about it ahead of time we have fuse issue, even though I brought a lot of stuff. I didn't bring my inline uh, fuse, the inline, uh, um, you know, things that look like just like the little fuses, and you stick it in there, and you got wires hanging out, and you can put fuses on them. Yeah, I, I forgot to bring all that. So uh, the easiest route at this point is to just go get some fuses since we're 70 miles away from the house. So we're gonna run up straight. We're gonna get a uh, box of fuses and uh, see if we can determine where we're at and see which one's blowing, whether it be the ignition control monitor, uh, the alternator, um, or uh, neutral stop backup switch. So, could be it, but I'm gonna think not. My money is more on the alternator. So, uh, let's see if we come up with Snapshot that. Go back to it. There we go. Is that your OBD reader? Yeah, it's a cheap one. I just use it to check codes and clear codes. I don't use none of my big stuff on the fly. Let me make sure I'm recording. Okay, we got more fuses, but we had an extra and didn't realize it. And I unplugged the ignition module, and uh, we put it in, turned the key on, it blew that one when I unplugged the ignition module. So the next big thing in that circuit that can pull that kind of power is going to be the alternator. And that's, it says it's connected to it. So since I don't have a full body wiring diagram, uh, I'm going to use a little bit of faith on that. But i got to tell you a little story. Went to buy these. He priced an alternator just to get a heads up on what it might cost, if that's what it is. Huh. Some guy was trying to tell him buying the parts counter at, at advanced that, no, you ain't got to do all this. Just spray some WD-40 in the alternator. I'll let y'all chew on that one and, and kind of figure out why I set the guy in his place right there. Uh, telling a kid to do that? What? Anyway. Let's uh, put the new one in. Real quick to tell the guy, I guess, that you want to see that on my channel. I might do some crazy stuff, but I'm sure going to let you know up front why I'm doing it and the dangers involved. A little motorcycle out on a drag strip today. Right down the road is uh, Huntsville Dragway. Uh oh. All right. We got that unplugged that's as far as we got and we're looking at that fuse right there so uh that turn the key forward i'll go ahead and turn it off Sometimes you don't see them blow, but that first one when it blew, boy, it was lightning strike. Uh, this time, it didn't blow. I don't believe. It don't look like it did. Let me stick it back in. All right, turn the key back on. I got my battery, yes, I got my battery on. Go ahead and bump the ignition. Uh, so as y'all can hear, he's got plenty of compression. It's not a mechanical issue. I mean, most of the time, I'm going to say 99.99, which I can actually prove myself wrong on that, that it will, uh, you won't blow a fuse um, with a mechanical issue normally, unless there's something else going on. Well, that fuse held up that time. Let's plug it back in. See what we got. I'm going to plug the... Uh, Go ahead and plug this back in and we'll give it another shot. Turn, yeah, keys off. Alright. 
and you see uh, to make sure just in case you know I'm talking and teaching and all that and I miss my timing sequence which I'm human uh, that's the reason why I got to see it blow it more than once or fail the test more than once just in case you know I miss my timing all right go ahead and uh, turn the key on it popped it all right let me put another fuse in guys I know this ain't the right way to do it but I don't have my big testers here that I can just redo the reset on them now let me unplug this again all right go ahead and turn key forward all right leave it plugged in I mean leave it turned on I'll plug it in <laughs> It popped it as soon as I plugged it in. Okay, go ahead and shut the key off. Well, that's a problem. <laughs> hey, Justin, it's the ignition module. It's repetitive. It's, it's popping it continuously. So, uh, let's get online and see if we can find one. As you can tell, it, it popped it twice with this plugged in. So uh, unplugged doesn't find. So that's definitely, probably definitely cheaper than an alternator. Thank God. Yeah, I know. So uh, gonna try to clean my hands again and we're gonna look for an ignition module. All right, take the key out and shut the door. Uh, he went inside and uh, I got to thinking this does have a direct connection to the coils. So let me, um, let me validate this test again one more time. Um, you want me to cross one on the Raleigh? Uh, do me a favor. I forgot the coils do plug directly in the bottom of this. Yeah. We're going to do the test one more time. Okay. To make sure it's not a coil that internally sorting. It's, uh, all right. Now, hold on a second. Let me turn on the battery. Alright, uh, turn key on. Fuse is good. Fuse is still good. When I stick this screw into this ground, it might pop that fuse. Oh, I guess they all have to come out. Well, it, it could be a cool pack problem. That's why I wanted the That's ballot. That's what her brother said was a cool pack problem. So, uh, I don't know if Well, it doesn't let you uh, isolate except through wiring, so you can't tell if it's burnt through in here or just a bad coal. So, uh, we got four wires, four pins. That's why I like to be able to pull the coals out to determine which ones. So, uh, I mean, there's only two coils, and it's a waste spark system, so. Hey, is Marley inside, Mom? Yeah. Okay. Across these two, we got point six seven. Across these two, we got point six seven. Across these two is an open load. So let's do it across these two, these two, and these two. So Three, 
see. So the, I guarantee this is probably just a ground input. I, I'm actually gonna look these up, but we're guessing the common. We got three. We got. I'm gonna pull up a diagram online. Got to because we got three here, one here. So I think that one is not. There's no resistance between that one out there, that one out there, and M3. But that center pin has continuity of around 0.6 to 0.7 ohms to those outer two. So that tells me that's a primary coil, I mean, primary of the coils. So, but that's good. It's like the um, ignition module default here is these. So, let me, since there's Nothing between those two. Let's see. That one right there is 0.6. This one here is. I don't see nothing wrong with the coils. Let me check the secondaries. Now that I got the camera in the right spot, check the secondary resistance. It would be 24, 4.3 kilo ohms. There's no shorts between those two. And these two here, we got 5.06 kilo ohm, 4. Point, I mean, that's close -ish. All right, so let's see if we got uh, any internal shorts between all these. Impressive. Yeah. <laughs> that won't be on camera. <laughs> all right, after testing all the secondary posts and the primary posts, there's no internal shorts. As I said before, we have 0 0.6 to 0 0.7 ohms between the center pin and that one and the center pin and that one. Add the two numbers together, 1.4, 1.3, across that. That's not right, but I understand we know how the primary works. I just want to let you know that you can go across the two uh, outer ones. Learn as I'm going on this one here. The closest I come to this setup was the quad four engine. And yes, I'm dating myself. All right, and then across the uh, well, two and three, five kilo ohms. Across one and four, four point three kilo ohms. I, I think that's out of spec, but it's this side. It's not the other side, and there's no short between these two. These two. Uh, the the, uh, the secondary windings and the primary windings. So this shows good. So you're over here, right? Or where you at? <laughs> this shows good. Alright, I got a really bad camera, man. You know, it's generally me. Uh, Alright, so we're looking at a rounding up uh, ignition module right now. And uh, hey, Marley, what are you doing, Marley? Hey, Marley. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I saved your life. It cost me a hand. Yeah. You owe me a biscuit. So, we'll come back around and I'm hoping it's an ignition module because this was a, a no start, a blown fuse. It ran fine up till then. So, Hopefully, that's the only thing wrong. 
But if you own one of GM's little side projects, they come with a lot of electrical problems. So let's get a module, find out. It is running. Hold on. Cannon's up there. Well, we ordered the module and uh, it came in but three days later and uh, we knew that one of the boys, you know, he was going to be at work and uh, <clears throat> and uh, it's imperative that car was running. So as soon as it come in, I actually uh, preemptively showed her how to install it. I removed it and I showed her everything she needed to do. To install it and that's why I put that little video there she installed it and she's about as happy as can be I'm happy the car is fixed so uh, please like subscribe and uh, uh, share with your friends and uh, uh, y'all have a blessed weekend